Welcome in to Rounding the Bases Live presented by Enterprise Bank and Trust. My name is Joel Goldberg and I hope that everyone had a good weekend. And that's a, um, I feel like I always say that or I say, you know, I hope you're having a good day and all of that. There's a lot going on, certainly a lot that's been going on since uh, I last spoke with everyone on Friday. And I do want to be able to talk about it um, in a productive way. You know, this podcast is is really about leadership. It's about culture. Um, it's about community. Uh, and so much of why I started this podcast back on March, I think, 24th, and this is episode 49, was to talk about all those topics that were going on or how they were affected, I should say, during times of adversity. And that was all pandemic related. Now we have even more going on um, and I'm actually going to talk about that with my guest today. It's not the reason why I had on my guest, but before um, we get to all that, I do want to thank Enterprise Bank and Trust. Hashtag no stopping you. We could all use that um, that hashtag on so many levels right now, um, but I appreciate their support. And talk to my friends at Casey Cattle Company this morning, Patrick Montgomery and his team. Uh, veteran owned and operated up in Weston, Missouri, Wagyu beef, burgers, brats, hot dogs, steaks, uh, you name it, they've got it. Um, again, veteran owned and operated, they're delivered to all 50 states, so check them out. And you can also see their social media. And then I've got a new sponsor starting today. And if you're down in Johnson County, check out JJ's Wine and Spirits. They're right at the corner of College uh, and Antioch. So the southwest corner of College and Antioch. Wednesdays are Wine Wednesdays, so 15% off all bottles. And I was just in there the other day, and they've got a phenomenal selection of, of everything. And what I really like about it, too, is just that good, friendly, um, they know everyone in there. It's one of those type of places where you walk in, um, and Mason and Jake are going to say, hey, Joel, and, and, and not just me, like, oh, hey, there's the Royals TV guy. Everybody that I saw walking in there, they knew. So nice personal touch. They'll help you find what you need. So check out JJ's Wine and Spirits at Antioch and College Avenue. Uh, now, what I would like to do is get to my guest. And we had set something up, oh, I'd say a few weeks ago. And I'm happy to bring in <clears throat> to the podcast right now Angel McGee, who, like so many people that I interview on the show, I, I always struggle with the title because she wears many hats. But um, I had her on to talk about the Kansas City Urban Youth Academy, which is one of the great developments in our community here in recent years. But uh, she's worked for the Royals for many years, the Chiefs, uh, all kinds of other things. And I, I'm going to ask you this question, um, but it, it's on a deeper level and we're going to talk about everything. Um, how are you doing? Because I know that there is a lot going on in your community and around the world um, that's extremely personal right now. Yeah, Joel, um, thank you for this opportunity, one and two. Um, thank you for allowing me to be transparent today. Um, like we kind of discussed, it's hard. That that question alone, how are you doing, is so complex right now because um, should be told, myself and a lot of my friends and family and colleagues, we are all over the place. Um, it's been the most exhausting uh, week mentally and emotionally, um, dealing with everything that we have seen um, as media projects it, but also within our own communities. And so I think today is more so I want to focus on the conversation, you know, um, I'm, day by day is a new, it's a new feeling. And, you know, uh, we still have way more progress to combat and to get through. Uh, but the fact that we're having this open forum and conversations, I hope that, you know, along with you and the viewers, that something is said that um, initially just ultimately uh, projects some change in our community. Yeah. And so I, I want to set all this up the right way. I mean, you and I were talking. Um, it's the reason why we're on a couple of minutes late, although. That I could come up with an excuse every day of why I'm late. My producers would tell everybody I'm always, you know, two minutes late. But, um, but you and I were talking for for a bit, and you know, I, I thought it was it was interesting to me because because I and you know, I don't need to fill everybody in on all the private conversations, but mm -hmm. I, I basically said, hey, I, if you're comfortable, I want to talk about this because I, you know, I've seen some of what you've 
uh, been been putting out on social media. So I, I was certainly thinking of you when I saw some stuff yesterday saying, gosh, I, you know, I've got Angel on tomorrow and um, I, I really want to talk about the Urban Youth Academy and we're going to, but I know there's so much more to talk about too. And, and you were kind of saying, I'm, I'm relieved that you mentioned that and you were worried about gearing up for today. By the way, you would have, you would have, you would have, you would have grinded through it. You would have been okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, cause I know you, I've, I've known you now for, we, we just figured out at least since 2014. Um, <clears throat> but you felt almost some relief you were saying by me even bringing it up. And quite frankly, if you weren't comfortable talking about what's going on in our community and around the country, I wouldn't have brought it up or I would have brought it up in the, you know, I was going to one way or another, bring it up in, in a way that was comfortable for you. Um, but even I almost like sit there questioning myself saying, boy, I should have reached out last night and said, Hey, here's what's going on. I, I don't want you to lose any more sleep than, than you're losing or anyone's losing right now. Um, but I got to imagine that this is, this is 24 seven, um, right now on your mind. I, it's everywhere. Um, my social feeds, it doesn't matter if it's LinkedIn. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it doesn't matter. Every morning, every hour that I am on a social media platform, it is Black Lives Matter. It is George Floyd. It is, you know, any qual it is everything highlighting the current situation that we have going on. And like I, you know, we talked a little bit more. Um, I just hate that we're back here again. Um, it brings light to why so many voices were outspoken for years. It brings light to the athletes that have protested. It brings light to so many of the hashtags that have come before this and hoping and praying and protesting and fighting for the, to, to not have another hashtag is it's quite frankly, the only way that I can sum it up. Um, I do know that, you know, sometimes you have to, things have to completely fall all the way down until they can be rebuilt back up. And for whatever reason, I think this time around, more people are listening, more people are joining in on the fight, especially uh, non-people of color, just understanding where, you know, where, where the problems are highlighting those issues how can we get through that how can we fight through the adversity how we how we can you know advocate together how can you use your voice you use your platform as it works for your good and how it works for my good how can we all work together to bring light to the situation um and that's where my mind is is just really looking at how it's affected our community i work with youth black and brown youth so you know, these kids one day are going into the communities that they have not already experienced such things that they have to know that we are fighting for them. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's where I want to go <clears throat> at this point to start. And let me, let me just back up real quick. So, and I told you this off camera too, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll completely be transparent about it. In my role, I've been very fortunate that as much as people say, well, you get paid by the royal, so you can't say blah, blah, blah. No one's ever told me what not to say. I, I've never had anybody within <clears throat> Fox or the Royals say, you're not allowed to talk. As a matter of fact, Dayton Moore will, will over and over again say, ask me anything. Talk about, any, you know. And look, we all in our walks of life um, have an idea of what <clears throat> within the the structure of where we work and what we do, what what we need to do to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I always know, and this is what I told you, was <clears throat> it's my goal in my role of covering the Royals to bring everyone in. It's, I believe, one of the beauties of sports that unites us. If our battles in sports are, well, I hate Madison Bumgarner, because he beat us, then that's great, you know, Giants versus Royals. That, that's the way sports are supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> in a very political world, you know, I think all the time about that parade of 800,000 people. You think all 800,000 of those people, if they didn't have Royals, would get along? No, they, 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 they wouldn't, right? But that's what brought everyone together. And I hope that, that sports continues to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I, I guess I would accuse myself at times of playing it safe in the sense of, I want as I want 
I don't expect every Royals fan to like my broadcast style either. I was oh, Joel's a nice guy. Look, I got plenty of people on social media that are going to troll me and tell me that I suck. It's part of the business, okay? But this is bigger than that. And so, you know, I want to be able to have these discussions. And I think there are a way to have these discussions if we can at least, elim- for the start, eliminate the, the stuff that people don't understand. We can get there and focus on what we can understand. Meaning that they're... they're we have a lot in common. You know, it, this isn't just like one side, the other side, and there's no in the middle. There's a lot of gray area in the middle that that hopefully people are starting to understand more. And so I want to be able to have that discussion. And, you know, sometimes I, I feel like I shy away from that because I don't want the yelling and screaming and the, um, you know, the trolls on both sides or whatever it is. But um, this discussion has to be had right now. Um, so that's just... I don't know what was on my mind, but I want to start and we'll get more into the protests and everything that is going on. Again, that's not why I had you on, but we have to talk about it. In my mind, we have to talk about it. But I want to talk about the Urban Youth Academy because I also think it'll help set up so much of these bigger discussions. Because you at the Urban Youth Academy, and I know this was a dream of Dayton Moore's and others, this this hope and this goal of mentoring and of raising um, leaders within our community, uh, six to 18 years old. It is a spectacular s- facility that came from a dream. And now you drive by that. If you've driven, a, driven by it on I-70 or you've been down in that 18th and Vine area, it's, it's special. Um, so let's start with that. What is it that you love about your role with the Urban Youth Academy and the impact that you get to have on kids here in this community? Oh, man. Um, Even that's a complex question, Joel. Mm -hmm. You're starting off on it today. Uh, In my role as manager of communications and outreach, I think just the overarching idea and feeling of knowing that we are giving kids opportunities that they would not have anywhere else. Um, For those that don't know about the academy, We're part of a bigger initiative underneath Major League Baseball as it pertains to youth baseball and youth softball. Uh, And there's about eight other academies across the nation. But here in Kansas City specifically, it was definitely a dream of Dayton Moore. And that dream really became a reality as we were going through postseason championships and uh, 2014 and through 2015. And, you know, with the help of then Mayor Sly James and the city of Kansas City and multiple private donors, um, it really spearheaded everything, that whole initiative. And to put it here in Kansas City, more importantly, because that is that was Dayton's dream. Uh, what our jobs are here to do is not so much on the field, although everything that we do is centered around baseball and softball, but it's, for, it's to provide um, our underserved youth who don't have the opportunity to play or have not been introduced to the game, to introduce them to the game, to give them an outlet to play. Um, a lot of this is steering from the declining, uh, in, the decline of African-Americans and Latinos playing in baseball. You know, it's giving these kids another avenue to play into sports. And we highly encourage even the multi-sport athlete. We don't come in and we don't take kids and say, Baseball and softball is all you need to play. No, we love that we have multi-sport athletes. Um, And our desire that we have is, you know, all of our programming is free. And we know a lot of our parents and and baseball in general is not the most uh, cost-friendly sport, if I can say it that way. Um, So a lot of our kids don't have the, the resources or the tools or the finances to play outside because of the cost. And we don't want the cost to be a hindrance to why they can't play or why they can't be introduced to the game. Uh, and so that's why all of our programming is free. That's why, you know, we we put way more into our programming off the field than we do on the field, because we feel as though once you come to the academy, you are part our, you're our responsibility. You are part of our family. So you're coming into this door you won't walk out the same way. You're going to get something when you come into our our door. Uh, And to see, you know, the staff is reflective of the kids that we want to serve, you know, that we're intentionally serving. So you're coming in and say your kid or, you know, we've got a boy or girl who's never played before. But as soon as they come in, they're already feeling a sense of, I belong. 
because they're looking at who is there to teach them. It's strategic, it's intentional, but it's there to say, you matter and you belong, just like all of your counterparts. And so back to your original question, I just had to give some background, but that to me is the best part of my job. It's just knowing that in some way, shape or form, one of these kids is gonna walk out of this door touched by one of us, if not it's from the staff or an opportunity or a gesture playing the game, something happened that is going to let them know that I can do this. Whether I, you know, I plan to pursue softball or baseball, or no, I just want to take it back and be a, a great leader in my community. That's what it's all about. We want to encourage and strive and create it, strive to create leaders in our communities on and off the field. Mm -hmm. It's special, I'm, I'm telling you. And it's, I was thinking about this the other day the Royals and Dayton Moore made a lot of news. It, I'm sure 100%. I haven't talked to Dayton in quite a while, but 100% um, sure it wasn't his intent to make news. It's not his style in any way, shape, or form. Right. But when when the little Royals, I'll call it that, um, I don't view them that way, but you know, in a world of the Yankees and the Red Sox, and they talk about national media, um, they're not focusing all their attention on Kansas City except for 2014 and 15. And I get it. We all get that. That's fine. Uh, we, we, we like our, our place here in Kansas City. I meant most of us do. <clears throat> but when it was announced the other day, late last week, that the Royals would continue to pay every minor leaguer because they matter as much in baseball as all the big leaguers because they're the ones going back to their communities because they're the ones, if they don't make it through the grind of just making a few hundred bucks here and there, or the ones going back and running academies and coaching and, you know, taking jobs with junior colleges and all that. They're the ones that are, that are helping develop the kids in our community. High praise all around baseball. You know, Angel, as well as I do, that there was nothing surprising about that. Maybe the only surprising part about it, it wasn't a su surprise to me but maybe a revelation to many that John Sherman happens to have the same values as Dayton Moore. None of that happens without John Sherman being on board with it. It's his team. We have a new owner. Uh, that was a very proud moment. And I've got to think that there's some similarities there to the Urban Youth Academy, because the kids in that Urban Youth Academy, as you mentioned, are considered almost like minor league players in the Royal system. It is another level of the minor leagues. It just happens to involve developing kids. So really, I'm guessing there was no surprise at all that the Royals are leading the way in paying all of their minor leaguers because they matter. Absolutely, Joe. Joel, you have, you have touched on it, truthfully. Uh, from day one, they have con always considered the Urban Youth Academy to be the, the eighth minor league affiliate, so to speak underneath the Royals. And it's because of the camaraderie and, you know, Dayton's willpower to let everyone know just how much our, our players mean to our organization and how much, you know, it's, it's beyond the field. And I think that's what's just, those are the main messages that I always want to get out to the community about the Urban Youth Academy um, and the Royals in general is that it's always about, you know, the impact. And so making that step, I mean, you and I both know, I was like, this is, this is synonymous. This is classic Dayton Moore. This is classic uh, John Sherman to be able to step up and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make sure these players are taken care of because it is the same, the same feelings and the same work that they're doing for the Urban Youth Academy as well. You know, those kids are, we don't view them as just kids. They have the potential to go out into their communities and be, you know, movers and shakers and leaders through the sport, you know, if that's what's helped them, great. But to start finding their own character and to, to find their person and their confidence in, in themselves is why we're here and what we're doing, what we're doing. And it's just a reinforcement and showing, you know, even from the major league side of things, how much, you know, our GM and our owner truly do care about this team. And it trickles all the way down to the Urban Youth Academy. And so more than the team, the community. I mean, I, I remember the first conversation I ever had with Dayton Moore. I don't know that he would remember it. Um, it was before your time, Angel. I got, a lot, I, got, I got a lot of years on you. But it was 2007, and I was in visiting with the St. Louis Cardinals. So I'd worked in St. Louis the previous nine years before I came here. Now I've been here 12. 
And uh, so I was in covering the Cardinals, and I remember having a con- I introduced myself to Dayton, and and I was trying to get to know him a little bit. I I knew that this job possibility existed. I don't know that he knew that, but I, I certainly wanted to meet him. And I, and I remember, you know, so he, this was his first full season, 07. He came, you know, during 06. And I remember him saying to me, I want to build a championship culture. Uh, he said, and I'm not just talking about the 25 guys in the locker room. I'm talking about the ticket takers and the vendors, uh, the you know, the people up in the front office, but not just that. I'm talking about the fans. And I'm talking not just about the fans in Kansas City. I'm talking about the fans in the region. So I think about that all the time. When I when I see the image of the eight hundred thousand people, that was the culture that Dayton Moore was talking about. We we all rallied around the Royals. We all became part of that culture, and and so we all are. I mean, anyone that's wearing that Royals hat, which by the way started popping up a lot more after fourteen and fifteen, not in Kansas City but around the country, was because of what Dayton's vision was. Now you have this Urban Youth Academy, and that vision extends beyond what he was talking about, or maybe it's what, what he was talking about and includes it. Now we have the opportunity to develop young young men and young women in a way that I think is probably pretty unique. What What is different? Because we have a lot of great resources, you know, big brothers, big sisters, um, you know, the, the Boys and Girls Club, Dr. Dred Scott's amazing. Um, there's so many, there's so many different, um, I believe all good, what makes, it's not a matter of better or worse, what right. makes the Urban Youth Academy unique? And our, I oh mean, we've been able to partner with, you know, Operation Breakthrough and the Boys and Girls Clubs and um, their work is simply amazing. And I think on all four fronts, we all serve, you know, the same purpose, which is giving these kids opportunities and making sure we're taking care of our kids. For the Urban Youth Academy, I think what sets us apart in our uniqueness is that not only do we have a sports theme tied to it, but it's just making sure that we're following them all the way through, you know. So once they're with us, we are creating a pipeline from certain categories. So starting from six to eight, then from nine to 12, then from 13 to 18. And at that point, we are able to leverage, you know, what paths they're going to take as they get into high school. If it's going to be collegiate sports or is it just going to be collegiate education? You know, we're able to to now have a full pipeline and starting them from young to old. I mean, we serve all the way from six to 18 and our pipeline lays that straight out. So I think for us, we're able to stay connected in that sense and making sure that we're following them through, that we are um, aiding them, that we are providing them those resources that we have, that whatever they need, we have essentially uh, in offering that. So I think that's the uniqueness tied to it. Of course, I think the overarching kind of um, oblivion, you know, the the main one is just our ties to the team, you know, for those kids that um, may not have grown up as Royals fans. A lot of them now are start are starting to become one. You know, they see they're in a sea of blue yeah, <laughs> every yes. day. It's hard to miss. You know, you're coming in and it's royal blue everywhere in the facility, and you're seeing the players on the on the wall, and you're seeing you know, the KC emblem on the sign outside, and you're just surrounded by a force. You're really surrounded by a force that wants to put so much into these kids and make sure not only that we're loving on them, but offering that support, but giving them that confidence that they can, they matter, and they can do whatever they put their minds to. Mm -hmm. A couple more questions about the Urban Youth Academy, and then we're going to get to what is going on in this country. And the the comments that are coming in, uh, there are a lot of them. So I want to hit a couple right now. Uh, one from our, our friend, Jason Hanna, who, uh, you see any of those great, good, not great, uh, amazing pictures on a daily basis involving, uh, Royals. They're usually coming from Jason. So, uh, kind words there. Um, Sharon Cole says, thank you for the spotlight on the Academy. Um, and then she had also said, so glad for the Urban Youth League um, to provide opportunity and leadership to kids. Thank you, Angel, for your involvement. And then um, I was yeah. just on this podcast. I was just on Kiana's <laughs> podcast the other day. And uh, you want to talk about some positive energy. Um, there's there, there's someone right there. That, Kiana. <laughs> I, I, I want to be around that energy on a regular basis. And um I was on with her the other day. It was a great conversation sometime yeah. last week. I don't remember. Again, like I said, it's all blending together. Um, but, but Kiana's awesome. So I want to throw those out there. A couple more 
regarding what's going on in a moment, but let's just advance the conversation on the Urban Youth Academy a little bit because like almost every organization, you've had to pivot here. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that I was over there, I don't even remember when, sometime, I don't know if it was January or February, talking um, over there about possibly helping with the kids and a, you know, like a podcast network and, and, and almost coming in there and helping them out. And then obviously everything changed. I mean, everything changed over at the urban youth Academy, like it's changed everywhere else. The Royals players and organization and minor leaguers are all doing zoom calls at this point. Um, you guys are no different than everyone else. So what's the pivot been? I I've started to see some of the virtual programming is going to be available. I know that you're not just going to shut this thing down because the kids need it and, and the summer doesn't stop. So what has the pivot been for the Urban Youth Academy? Yeah, of course. Um, just like any other major facility, major organization, we've been able to, uh, we've been blessed enough to have these virtual platforms to host certain programs. So a lot of our June programming um, was either one postponed until midsummer or two, we went to a virtual program. So for our science and baseball camps, um, those are going virtual. um, And now we're kind of more postponing some of that summer programming and looking at July-ish timeframe, we're not really sure yet, Um, but we still wanna make sure we're, we're giving those opportunities to our kids. Nothing is canceled. It's just, unfortunately, you know, we have to follow the guidelines of Mayor Lucas and what the city of Kansas City has put forth for certain facilities. And as far as size and people, we're in a different boat because, you know, we're outdoors, but we're indoors. We're so huge and, you know, trying to to bring a pool of people together. We just want to play it safe, number one, and for the kids especially. Um, so it's just been it's been very different. Um, not being there and not being around the kids, you know, just like every other school and camp and program, we had to uh, end abruptly. You know, we weren't even able to say, uh, send our kids off, you know, for the end of the year that we're in our, our Raising Royals after school program and our yet workly, uh, weekly workouts. You know, those kids all ended school and we weren't able to send them off properly. So I think, you know, a lot of those were some bummers for us, but we want to make sure we're still able to. Uh, reclaim our summer, as I like to say, and offering those programs. So it's really just staying and staying. Uh, if you're following any of our social channels or on our newsletter, it's just staying up to date and making sure that um, you are in in the loop and know what's going on as we get through the summer. But we're still here, and as soon as we are getting the okay to you know open up and, and start functioning again, it's going to be August, no breaks. Yeah, and then let's go, and and hopefully yeah. baseball is back soon for all of us. I, Feel like we're leaning that way i don't want to say it's happening but i i hope now that we're here in the june that we're talking about royals baseball next month um so we'll, we'll see what happens with that a couple of more that that came in and this will let me move on to and go back to our discussion but um alex thank you for using your platform to shine light on everything that's currently going on i hope to be able to do that and uh, like i said at the the start of the broadcast i um i try not to get political uh, but i want everybody involved and um, but I, but th- this is a conversation that has to happen. Carla Smith, uh, such a breath of fresh air. Thanks for the transparency and sharing these positives. Um, there are a lot of positives. There are also, you know, obviously a lot of, a lot of negatives. Here, here's, um, by the way, just because you'll en- you'll enjoy this one. Um, yeah, she does. She doesn't stop, does she? Yes. Thank I you, Kiana. <laughs> All right, I got I got to make sure that we give her some love. So, I was saying before that. If we could at least find common ground, that's a starting point. Mm-hmm. So the common ground, I believe here, and this doesn't happen very often, is it seems like almost everyone understands that that they watched a life senselessly taken away. I would call it murder. Um, people can debate that. Yeah. If you sit there and think this is suddenly starting to happen ask yourself the question, was it always happening, but there wasn't video and there wasn't cell phones and there wasn't this and that to record it all? That's, to me, an obvious answer. This didn't just start. This has been going on since you were born, since your parents were born, and on and on. And I and I know that that's ultimately what this is about. It, it's not, and I don't want to diminish the loss of a life. There shouldn't be loss of any life ever. Um, but this is the life that seems to have been the trigger 
to the next level of hopefully understanding. Yeah. Shouldn't should, shouldn't have come to this. Um, you know, why wasn't it the one a couple of weeks ago? Mm. You know, why wasn't it the one before that and the one before right. that? But this is different. And I, and I think it's possible that that has to do with the fact that, that everyone's been holed up in this pan. Everybody's stressed out to begin yeah. with. And, and so maybe maybe that's making things boil over. But I want to, and I know I'm talking too much, but I also think it's 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 important for me to share my perspective because I believe that my perspective might be might fall in line with many that are watching. And I don't know if that means translation. There are a lot of white people watching. I I I just I think it's my way of saying that not everyone has walked in the shoes that is watching this right now of a young black woman or a young black man or an older one for that matter. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to share this story with you because I think it's important on perspective. Uh, and I haven't, I didn't tell you that this was coming and I haven't shared it on a broadcast. I shared it once in one speech after it happened, but it, it, it was kind of clunky and hard to tell, but I'll, I'll tell it like this and it'll resonate. Um, and, and, and you'll know exactly where I'm going with this. But a year and a half ago, I was driving to Wichita. Uh, I was, I had announced a Mavericks game, hockey game the night before, and I was going to watch my son play in a hockey tournament. He was already there. He'd gotten a ride. So I was going Saturday morning. Nice Saturday morning, it's, you know, 10 o'clock, whatever. I'm maybe an out, hour outside of Wichita and I get pulled over. Okay, I got my pickup truck. Um, my thought, I can remember all this. My thought process, I pass the trooper. Okay, I do what, what I've always done check the speedometer, I think I'm okay. See him pull out, now he's behind me, so the heart beats a little bit more. He pulls me over, so the heart's beating, but but my default, my mindset is, I don't think I was speeding, but if I was, that's fine, I'll deal with it. It'll be okay, no biggie. I then hear him on his speaker say to me, get out of the car, put your hands up, Put your keys on the top of the car or the truck. Get out. This is on um, I-35. Um, put your hands up. Get out of the truck. Don't look backwards. And in the rearview mirror, I see, I see his gun drawn. My thought, and this is all going quick. My thought was, well, I know I didn't do anything wrong. So this must be a misunderstanding. So the first challenge I want to issue anyone that's watching right now is if that would have been your thought, your default, then you've probably never experienced racism. Because I've never been pulled over worrying about my safety. I've never been pulled over worried about being misunderstood. I'd also never been pulled over at gunpoint. So it scared me. It rattled me. But in my head, I kept thinking... I know I didn't do anything wrong. This must be a misunderstanding. So he has me walk around the truck, hands up, back up, back up, watch the ditch, sir, keep backing up, and he cuffs me. So I'm a little freaked out. I've never been arrested in my life, never been cuffed before. And all I keep thinking in my head is, I don't understand what's going on, but this will work itself out. And he puts me in the car, as we talk through it, we come to realize that the stolen plates on my car weren't my plates. Somebody had swapped out my plates, maybe at the Mavericks game, maybe in my driveway, I don't know, the night before. Someone had stolen the truck in Overland Park, and then after they stole it, they found a similar looking truck and swapped the plates. So that truck was driving around with my plates, and I was now driving around with what registered as a stolen vehicle. We worked our way through it, had to sit for about 45 minutes. We actually chatted, had a nice talk. And I went on my way. And I remember leaving thinking, if I had been black, that would have been different. At the minimum, it would have been different. The result might have ended up being the same. It might have. It might not have. But if I, if I understand it correctly, had had the same experiences as a black man or woman growing up, my default wouldn't have been the same. So... I tell that story as a way to lead into you and your perspective on this because it's not an opposite, um, it's not an 
opposite take on you. It's a different perspective from where I came from. And so I've been thinking about that a lot lately when we look at what's going on in the world and understanding that this isn't just about George Floyd. This is about a lifetime of dealing with moments like that. Um, am I on to something there? Absolutely. I think what is, you know, I, I've seen so many quotes. I've seen so many analogies. I think what it comes down to is that, you know, as it's a particular group of people, you know, that is that is suffering this these injustices, but it's a right or wrong issue. And that's where it really lies, right versus wrong. It's not black versus white. It's not any of that. It is right and wrong. And, you know, you alluded to that so eloquently as far as, you know, using your story, because for many, if not all of my black brothers and sisters, that is not our default, you know, in our thinking when it comes to um, certain situations involving law enforcement. Unfortunately, you know, just think about, I mean, just years and years and years and years and years and generations and generations and generations. I have family members that are now saying, wow, this is what we, you guys are marching just like we did in the 60s. Yeah. We thought this would be over. We thought we, we thought we march for you. And here you are in turn marching for us again. And I think I really just, you know, I touch on wanting people to understand the issue is not, you know, it's not the groups of people involved. It is, it is coming down to, you know, what is right and what is wrong. And we clearly saw what was wrong. You know, it ended up being murder on camera. Um, but understand that that is the daily reality for so many of us. You know, the simple fact of, oh, let me check my speedometer. I wasn't going that. Versus me, let me keep my hands on the steering wheel. Angel, don't make any sudden movements. Don't reach too, don't, don't, just stop. Don't do anything. If he says something, don't, just, just be, just be still, you know? And for that, you know, I think I really just want folks to understand that this issue is just far more greater than what you're seeing and what is on the TV, you know, because we know how media is, you know, how the press can be and spewing rhetoric and incorrect rhetoric. And my encouraging is just to listen to understand. Just listen to understand, listen to these viewpoints, listen to these stories, listen to these recollections. Do not be afraid to educate yourself. You know, we're so, we're such a society that's caught up on, you know, acting first, thinking later, or, you know, writing our thoughts out and this and that. But if we were willing to sit down and hear to learn versus hearing to respond, those are two different things. And, you know, I can go all day with this, Joel, and I know we have a time limit, but I just think from my experience, you know, it's just, there was a relentlessness and there's, there's an exhaustion, a depletion, and folks are just tired. We're just tired. You know, and those voices, if everyone comes together in their voices, mm -hmm. this is going to progress in, in, a, in a way that would be monumental for the history and the turn and the progress of this country. If everyone would just come together, you know, you don't have to try and find words to speak out if you're a non-person of color, you know, just using your voice, advocating and just educating yourself and trying to figure out how, OK, where to start. Those are the things. I mean, you mentioned it in our, our conversation. You know, you don't know the words to say, but you looking and seeing at all the different posts and reading the different quotes and things. And, you know, you started to repost and retweet and share. You know, those are starts. Yeah. The thing is just starting that dialogue. It's just starting the dialogue. And unfortunately, we've been here before. I have so many other hashtags that I've, I've been involved in, in retweeting and sharing and speaking out about. And my fear was that there would be another one. And so here we are. But now I think we're different and we're in a different light because everyone is now feeling some type of way. Yeah. And um, it, it takes, you know, just like it takes a village to raise a child, that child is going to raise up fighting for its village. And that's what you're saying. Mm. That, and that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, 
I, I hear where a lot of the takes are right now in arguing it is over the looting and the and the violence that's coming by the way from law enforcement in some cases it's coming uh you know we're, we're hearing that expression bad apples which there's a there's an old chris rock sketch where he's like wait a minute what what about apples is like murder you know it was sort of his his comedic twist on things but still going very deep so i'm i'm careful to label it just bad apples the reality of it is every profession is going to have its bad apples you know plenty of cops i know plenty of cops um with with our experience of being at stadiums um we make a lot of friends in that community too and so i I, that that shouldn't be gone unsaid um it's the it's not the same thing but but again like i'll say there are a lot of people that i don't agree with in the media Mm -hmm. um but that doesn't mean everybody in the media is bad. This is so much deeper than that, though. Yeah. And and again, it gets back to um, being not just profiled, but just an injustice from the day that you're born. And so, so y- you as someone of color have a much steeper hill to walk up in life than I do. And so that's what I've come to understand in all of this. But if we can put aside the whole debate about the looting and all of that. I mean, I, I think if you look at one of the rising stars to this in the last handful of days has been the mayor of Atlanta. And and if you haven't listened to her speech yet, do it because it'll give you goosebumps. For anyone, I saw this comment just come in from Sharon um, Cole again. I cannot imagine living with fear just under the surface. And as a mother living in fear for my sons, wrong is wrong. Well said. Um, that That's when, if, if you hear the mayor of Atlanta the other night, her whole thing was, uh, you know, I've got four sons. I've got, I've got four black children. I think it was all sons, but um, four children. And, you know, I told my oldest, once you leave the house, you go out there, I can't protect you. And that's what I would tell everyone protesting in Atlanta right now. Once you're out there, I can't protect you. But anyone that is a mother or a parent should be able to understand the importance of protecting your kids. And so for me, when I think about if my kids who have privilege doesn't mean rich or anything like that. It means privilege means that, that they're not climbing up that same steep hill that everyone else. Just start with that, right? Just start with that and understand the injustices. And, and hopefully that's a way to at least understand. I mean, I always say walk in someone else's shoes. It's not easy to do, right? Walk in someone else's shoes. So I, I my hope is that all of this, as awful as it is, opens up more people's eyes, myself included, to a world that maybe, or to shoes we've never walked in before. Do you, Angel, have hope in the midst of all of what you described? And and Kiana said the same thing. I'm hearing this from so many people, by the way, not all black, but um, consistently from my African-American friends, we're tired. Amidst that fatigue, do you have hope? You know, I, the way I was raised, I was raised, you know, with a father that was in ministry and pastoral ministry. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a man of God leading me and not only my, you know, my childhood to the woman I am today, but also through my spiritual walk. Um, that is the underlying, I feel like, notion in everything that I've ever believed everything I've ever experienced, regardless if it was a trial or tribulation of some sort, personal, national, whatever, was just to have hope. Because if you don't have hope, then everything is lost. Then what are we hoping for? If there's no sense of hope, there's no, what are we fighting for? What is, where is the progress going to come from? And even during this most trying time where I'm just like, Y'all, I, I don't know about, I don't know, I, I, because this one has really taken over. It's, you know, it's sent a lot of people over the edge. This time around has really sent a lot of folks over the edge. But even in the midst of that, I still believe that we can learn through this. You know, it's going to take responsibility of actions from a lot of different parties and a lot of different um, persons that are involved. But I still feel as though if we can all together get this going that that hope can turn into action which turns into progress 
there's progress being made. I, the, there's no doubt there's, but it's painful progress. And, um, and that's my perspective. Again, I, you know, I don't want to call it an outsider's perspective, but it's, it's the perspective of someone again, that hasn't walked in those shoes, but I just, I see things right now on a daily basis that shows movement forwards. The, the hard part and the part that you're right, shouldn't be hopeless, but that, that you have to fight against is that, wait a minute, why are we still here? I, I think that that's, you know, that's, that's that heavy burden that, that so many are living with on a daily basis that, that this is still even a discussion. I would recommend, and there are a million, uh, amidst all of the noise in the media and all of that, and by the way, there are a lot of, um, I'm always careful to also stick up for the media, especially in this day and age um, where they're so often painted and deservedly so at times. We mm -hmm. live in a world right now where everything is so, e we all could be a member of the media because of social media, right? There, There is the word media in social media. We all have the ability to throw stuff out there and that's what's blurred the lines. You know, it's not just an article or a column in the paper anymore, it's a blog. It's not just a radio show, it's a podcast. It's not, just, you know, on and on and on. It's not, it's not commenting to the editor, it's putting out your own stuff. So, you know, the lines have been blurred. And I think that's what makes it challenging. I also think that if we don't have the media around to hold others accountable, um, that this stuff doesn't come to light. The problem is what happens then with all the clickbait and everything that goes on. So that's a whole nother discussion. It's, it's one that uh, unfortunately is, is where we're at right now. But if you're looking for resources, there's so much out there. Uh, the one, the thing that I watched last night that just really moved me and put things at a, a, at a deeper level of perspective was Trevor Noah's, I'd say about 25 minute take. Um, you know, and, and when, then when you start thinking about, you know, apartheid in South Africa and his perspective on things. So I'd encourage everybody to go to YouTube and, and just check that out. I, you know, I, I think you, you talked about angel educating yourself. That's true for all of us. Just be open-minded and, and, and listen to other perspectives. You know, I mean, I, I try to challenge myself every day to learn period. So why wouldn't we want to learn about others and, and see what can make us better? What advice would you have for people, whether it be resources or how they can get involved if they're not um, protesting or they're not comfortable? And, and quite frankly, you know, there's some dangerous situations out there right, right now, too. I mean, we're trying to tell a lot of people to stay home um, so that they don't get hurt. That's a whole nother discussion. But what advice would you have for others that just that want to see good happen here that want, I mean, ultimately I hope we all want some good. Right. Right. I think it's, it's being open to having that dialogue, you know, um, for a lot of folks, it's going to be a self check, you know, for yourself, you know, looking at your group of friends, looking at family members views, looking at uh, just the injustices that, you know, go far beyond what we're talking about in this, this setting when it comes to um, police officers or, you know, police brutality, but looking at the education system, looking at, you know, the, uh, the prison, the pipeline of prison, you know, the narratives, all, it's just, there's so much, but it starts with just that open-mindedness and being willing to learn and wanting to learn and, and do more. The Kansas City Public Library, if a lot of you are on Facebook, they actually shared a series of books that will help to start the conversation in educating yourselves. And the, the books that they listed, oh my gosh, they are phenomenal. So if, if reading is your thing and that is something where you wanna start, I would definitely encourage looking at that list and you can find it, Kansas City Public Library on Facebook, um, that list that they have posted. There's also a million of different, a uh, million different websites right now on social media as far as Twitter and Instagram. Truthfully, you can type in the hashtag Black Lives Matter of some sort and colorofchange.org. And they have essential ways for non people of color to start these conversations. They have specific threads, you know, for folks to how do, you, if you're wanting to start change, how do you start it? And it gives you just different synopsis. I've, you know, reposted a, uh, a, 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 a post last night that started talking about, you know, how do I educate my toddlers? Because that's where it starts, you know, no it, it starts in the home. It starts, it starts at that young age. And, you know, it, and it's not teaching so much how not to be racist. <laughs> it's teaching the love for humanity and for those around you, how to be kind. Don't see, see my color, 
You don't have to see color, but see my color as it pertains to my inequality and injustice. Don't don't use it as I don't see color. You have to see my color to see the injustice. Mm. But at the same time, it starts with just teaching at home the love, the kindness, the character. And that's why the Urban Youth Academy, just kind of swooping down back to that is just so important because we're bringing all walks of life together in a setting that sports is just happens to be the main focal point. Yep. But it's that it's that important for everyone to be around those who don't look like them. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let Kiana help wrap it up here. Also, my buddy Wes Hamilton, who yes. if, if you just need to smile right now, just, just have a conversation with Wesley. And, you know, Wes was on my podcast before he became a, massive Netflix star, uh, superstar, but you know, he, um, he, he, that smile and his perspective is one that, that will continue to help people too. And I, I think it's voices, you know, certainly like, like his and, um, you know, like Kiana's, like yours and, and so many all around our city and the country that are going to help with this. And then in turn, you know, and, and, and I'll wrap it up this way we didn't even get to your work with the chiefs and, and um, <laughs> that's okay um, and, and um well let me hit on it real quick you, you you work with a guy over there i believe in in tyron matthew that that i i don't know him but he has quickly to me become a massive voice in this community and that has to yeah. be so amazing to, to be able to work with a guy that's so passionate yes absolutely um being a part of you know uh the tyron matthew foundation his main mission is really providing resources and tools to underserved youth as and families. And so during this time, we've been able to, you know, have the COVID-19 radio fund, which we raised so much money for going specifically to three different foundations, Restart, uh, Hope House and the BMA Foundation to help those that needed uh, instant and emergency relief during this time. But, you know, even in that sector, you know, the, this entire situation is is intersectionality at its all time high. You know, everyone is affected in some type of way, shape, or form. Um, so to be able to be a part of you know his work and and with him is is an absolute um, pleasure. If I if that's an, that's more of an understatement, but just seeing you know firsthand how he's devoted to making change in this community. He's come to Kansas City and Kansas City has just openly embraced him from day one. And he's proven that. And, you know, it's exciting to see what he, we will be able to do um, in the future in his time here in Kansas City. as well. I'm excited to watch it. I follow him on, on social media just to see what's going on because I enjoy his voice well beyond what, what I enjoy with what he does on the field. That obviously speaks for itself, but it's 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 fun to watch guys like that. We've seen him with the Royals. We've seen him with the Chiefs. Um, they have a voice, these athletes. Uh, they don't have to be the superstar. It helps when they are, obviously, because they get those causes out there. But so important to our communities. So um, final thought as we as we wrap it up, Urban Youth Academy, everything that's going on. Um, we talked about hope. The, these kids, let's wrap it up this way, Angel. We've always heard this, right? The kids, they're our future. How, how hopeful, back to that hope question, how hopeful are you for their generation? I'm super hopeful. I think they are the generation that's going, the generation before them is the one that they see jumpstarting and inspiring the change and demanding the change. And I think it's only going to trickle down and they're seeing their counterparts and their family and their leaders fighting for them. And it, all it takes is a seed. And once you plant a seed, you continue, you watch it grow. And I believe that's what we're doing. And that's why I'm so hopeful. I think uh, there's reason for hope. And there's a lot of reason to be scared right now. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, the more that these discussions can happen, I think are, it's important. I know that. Um, but I'll also, I just, you know, like I said, I, I didn't know that I was going to have you on in the middle of what was going on. In some ways, that's very short-sighted on my part because it's been going on for generations. But it's obviously at the forefront right now. But I think that, that it interweaves very nicely with everything that the Urban Youth Academy is about with the hope that you talked about. And that was really originally uh, my hope was just to be able to shed some light on the Urban Youth Academy because I'm lucky enough to be close enough at least to it to understand uh, how special of a place it is. That hasn't changed. That won't change. I think it'll only get better. So 
you're right. We could go on and on for hours yeah. and hours. Um, you know, we, we, we did almost an hour. And so maybe we'll do more. Who, who knows? But I just want to say, um, first and foremost, thanks for, for sharing the Urban Youth Academy, but also your perspective on things. I hope, I hope it gives reason to, to people to think and, and maybe dig a little bit deeper for those that, that don't understand that perspective, that haven't, as I said before, walked in the shoes. I'm, I'm proud to call you a friend. It's been, you know, I was asking because you know your timeline better than me in terms of when you started. I just remember the young kid that started popping up at, you know, at the Royals and, <laughs> um, and, and, and now she's doing big things and, and all that. That would be Angel, by the way. I'm talking about her in third person. So, um, so I'm, I'm proud of the progress that, that you have made, the impact that you're making, that, will, that you will continue to make. I'm here as a resource if I can do anything um, that's open-ended, that'll always be there for you. So, um, Angel, thanks for doing this today. I'm glad that, that as much as it, it may have had you um, a little bit uneasy coming in, not I know because of me, but just because, you know, the whole how are you doing question, how do I, 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 I'm glad that we had the ability and that the timing actually worked out that this was going on at this point and hopefully it was one that was productive for you too. Absolutely, Jill. You know how, you know exactly how I feel and I just appreciate you one for, you know, being able to call you a friend. You've watched me literally grow from the little kid running around mm. the field, you know, with the headset on till now, um, but also just mm. giving a platform for um, this conversation, you know, and, and doing so in such an eloquent manner, um, but also one that will help inspire change and uh, ultimately progress. I hope so. I know so. And um, I don't know when it'll be. Maybe it's, you know, small and incremental. And that's that's been the story of your life and, and, and those before you. But but hopefully we, we continue even even with potential steps backwards um, to go forward. So, uh, Angel, thanks for spending all the time. Hang tight for one sec. I want to talk to you uh, off air, but I appreciate it. And um, and again, I should remind everyone. Uh, not should just want to remind everybody if you want more information about the urban youth academy you can check them out mlb.com slash kcuya that's kansas city urban youth academy.com it is a special special place and angel's certainly a part of that thanks for doing it angel appreciate it thank you all right gonna push that up here i kind of joke all the time that i've become also the director of my own tv show hopefully we're back next month with baseball i'm not stopping the show though uh, tomorrow is episode 50 and then i'm going to move on to the next 50 and the next as long as there are stories to tell in our community whether they be about business leadership entrepreneurship or, or, or just humanity um and, and that was all rolled into this episode i'll continue to do that I want to thank my new sponsor jj's wine and spirits if you're down in johnson county 15 percent uh, off of wine on Wednesdays, wine Wednesday. Gotta love the alliteration. A great place. They take care of everyone. They they know their stuff. So if you're down in that area, give them uh, a try. They're at the southwest corner of Antioch and College. Uh, I was in this weekend, and um, they're awesome. They really take care of everybody. So check them out. Also, Casey Cattle Company, whether it be on social media or their website, Wagyu Beef. If they're sold out, keep checking back. They're in high demand. It'll change your life if you like steaks, burgers, hot dogs, brats, because it tastes better than anything I've ever had. And they deliver to all 50 states, including down here to Kansas City. And a thanks, as always, to Enterprise Bank and Trust. Hashtag no stopping you. Thanks for watching today. For everyone that has watched, or if you're watching after the fact, please share this with your network. I think it was an important conversation. I want to continue to have these conversations. Have a safe Monday, a good rest of the week, and I'll see you back here for episode 50 tomorrow on Rounding the Bases Live, presented by Enterprise Bank and Trust.